For most of us, we are fairly used to using something similar or close to a full frame or crop sensor in DSLR or mirrorless cameras, especially <laughs> Sony users. While many of you know four thirds sensors and have a general understanding of what it does to footage, I thought it would be a great idea to take a deep dive into it and see how it affects the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera and the footage it produces in 360 seconds. The Four Thirds camera sensor was originally created by Olympus and Easterman Kodak for DSLR and mirrorless cameras. The name Four Thirds comes from the actual aspect ratio of the sensor, 4-3. Because the sensor is noticeably smaller than most standard sensors in DSLR or mirrorless cameras, it has a crop factor of about times two, making a 12 millimeter lens look more like a 24 millimeter lens when filming on a Four Thirds sensor. This was originally designed for telephoto lenses that were big and heavy. Because of the crop factor, you could get away with using a smaller and more lightweight telephoto lens, making a 300 millimeter lens into a 600 millimeter lens. All in all, this is a modern sensor and it was developed specifically for digital cameras. In 2008, Olympus and Panasonic released the Micro Four Third System, or MFT. They utilized the same sensor size as the Four Third System, but removed the mirror box from the camera. One of the big advantages is that they are smaller and lighter than other sensors. This also allows for smaller, lightweight lenses to be used with cameras equipped with the sensor. In my opinion, this does well for the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera. Being able to use lighter MFT lenses on this camera does make it a little bit easier to use run and gun. Like the Lumix 12mm to 35mm lens, it's super light and easy to pack and travel with. While a lot of people will use adapters for heavier Canon lenses on this camera line, it's still nice to have the option for lighter lenses if you need to travel light. As mentioned earlier in this video, the crop factor means bigger focal length. This allows you to pair smaller MFT lenses with the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera. Pretty straightforward. In my opinion, Blackmagic has always priced their cameras extremely well. It's insane how inexpensive their cameras are compared to other industry standard cameras. Do the pockets have all the bells and whistles we would like them to have? No, but the quality of image it produces is an incredible bargain for those who know how to use them properly. That being said, even though you have to buy a bunch of accessories for these cameras, the cost of MFT equipment compared to DSLR or mirrorless cameras seems to be a lot cheaper. Now, this may not be true if you plan to exclusively use EF lenses with your pocket cameras, but you at least have the option with some cheaper lenses that, in my opinion, hold up pretty well against some of the higher end EF lenses. If you're a Canon user, feel free to fight me in the comments on this point. Last on the advantages we will talk about is something I discovered while researching this video. It's called telecentric optical path. And what that means is that the optical path of the light hitting the sensor is coming in at more of a perpendicular angle. So what does this do? It actually produces a better and brighter result in the corners of your footage while at the same time giving you improved off-center resolution. The diameter of the lens mount actually exceed the size of the sensor, allowing again the light to hit the sensor perpendicularly to the sensor surface, ensuring a sharp and clear image at the corners of the footage. This is a big advantage over DSLR cameras who face a host of issues with degradation of peripherals, ghosts, flares, and a loss of resolution that are especially noticeable with wide angle lenses. All right, let's get to the disadvantages. Bad autofocus. While there have been some advancements when it comes to autofocus with MFT sensors, they are still trailing others in their autofocus systems. This is true in the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera, which only has a punch-in autofocus system. But if we're really being honest, while it would be incredible for this camera to have a better autofocus system, it is still a cinema camera and it is meant to be focused manually. Maybe that will change one day. But if you plan to use this camera, know that you will have to improve your manual focusing skills, which in my opinion can actually make you a better videographer and help you pay more attention to it than you would if using a mirrorless or DSLR camera. That being said, I'll still put this in the disadvantage category. Poor performance in low light is inevitable with a sensor this size. It just can't keep up with the likes of Sony when it comes to low light situations. When looking at the BMP CC4K, like was said before, it is meant to be a cinema camera. This means that it's supposed to be used with lighting elements and not without. While there are ways around this, this camera does have limitations in poorly lit situations because of the sensor size, which in some ways does affect the amount of dynamic range possible on the camera. If you are in a situation where you need to film somewhere 
poorly lit, either pull out your Sony a7 III or make sure you have enough light to properly light your subject. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. The same can be said when talking about MFT sensors, double focal length. The negative reaction of this is that the aperture also doubles because of this, meaning if you have a lens with an aperture of f2, using it on a camera with an MFT sensor like the pocket results in you actually having an aperture of f4. This, of course, results in less depth of field and less bokeh in your footage. If you use a Metabone Speed Boost adapter, you can actually increase the field of view and boost your f-stop. The Metabone Speed Booster costs about $650, though there are some less expensive alternatives. So, some final thoughts on the BMP CC4K and the Micro Four Third sensor. While there are challenges to using this type of sensor, many of them are fairly manageable if you're willing to put in the time and effort to address them. The pockets are not meant to be used by those who are looking to quickly and easily film something right out of the box. I've been filming for years and it still took me a long time to really understand how this camera works and how to get the best image out of it. In fact, I really still feel like I'm learning and experimenting still with this camera to see what it can handle. So if you're just looking for a camera to work for you right out of the box without a lot of hassle and a lower learning curve, definitely opt for a DSLR or mirrorless camera. But if you, like me, want to get the incredible footage at a lower price point and are willing to work with the advantages and disadvantages, you won't find a better camera at this price point. Feel like I missed something or said something wrong? Please let me know in the comments below so we can correct it. Thanks for watching today's episode. Be sure to subscribe to our channel below and hit the notification bell to keep up to date with our latest videos. Until next time, this is John Owens with Frame Voyager.